But again, it is uh, good to be back and to be able to speak to you. And um, <clears throat> there are going to be things which will be said in the sermon that might challenge your perception, your thinking, your behavior, your actions, and the core of your being. Uh, I'm in no way, shape, or form uh, trying by this sermon to make anybody feel bad or uh, just beat ourselves up and down. I'm just going to preach the gospel in season and out of season. No one is born hating another person because of their color, their skin, or their background, or religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they must, or they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. This is, this is a quote from Nelson Mandela. May his soul rest in peace. Being a witness to the resurrection, to champion racial injustice. I've done a bit of tweet to that. And so the title of my sermon is How to uh, Be a Champion of Racial Justice as a Disciple of Jesus Christ. Who is a champion? Well, a champion is a person who enthusiastically supports, defends, fights for a person, belief, or a principle. What about a witness? Well, a witness is someone who has seen something take place and is there to tell of all that he saw, heard, and experienced. And equally, as Christians, we are called to be witness of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, to begin with, nobody, regardless of where they come from, or their ethnicity, social class, or gender, reads the Bible from a culturally impartial standpoint. When we read the Bible, we do so with our cultural blind spot. And so the challenge is to grow in racial awareness when it comes to reading the Bible. The overall message of the Bible has nothing but unequivocal condemnation for racial injustice. And racial injustice is a sin and there is no justification in the Bible for sin. Jesus died on the cross as, as a victim of national and social injustice to bring liberation and freedom to all people as we witness to his cross. Now, I know we've been given a test that I have been reading today, but I will be using the narrative of the Good Samaritan in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke as a foundation for my teaching this morning. How do we achieve racial justice? Well, there's really two things I want to talk about today. Love God and love your neighbor. We have heard the story so many times, but let's just look at it afresh today and milk it. When I mean milk it, just go into it and see what is really happening. Love God. Well, that's quite simple. Some people find it difficult to love God. Hey, I'm, I'm a child of God. You are a child of God. You are made in the image of God. So loving God should come naturally. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. 
Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. And loving our neighbors shows that we are children of God. Now, let's come to the narrative of the Good Samaritan. You know the story. A teacher of the law. Jesus is speaking in public. A teacher of the laws can be described as the scribes. They were well versed in the Bible, in the Old Testament. He came to Jesus. The Bible says he stood. He was a lawyer. He stood to test Jesus. So his question to Jesus is not to learn something from it, but rather to trap Jesus. Just like many people do today. He came to Jesus saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Well, you know the law. What is written in the law? This guy said to him, Well, love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. I'm paraphrasing here. So Jesus answered, Well, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But the beauty of this story and the important part of this story is what I'm about to read next. This lawyer, this teacher of the law, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? <laughs> he want to justify himself. He want to trap Jesus. Who is my neighbor? Then we have the whole story of the Good Samaritan. Next. Jesus said to him, well, there was a certain man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. So this guy was beaten, battered, stripped of everything he had and left on the floor to die. There are three stages that happens in this story. A priest, <laughs> like myself, <laughs> or the Archbishop of Canterbury, came on the road, walking, saw this guy dying. And he walked on the other side and left him. A Levite, an Archdeacon, for example, comes along, <laughs> see this guy dying, and leaves him. Both of those people who worked in the temple. The Levites were people who supported the priest in the temple in Jerusalem. So these two people passed by. Remember, the foundation of the story is who is my neighbor? So Jesus is telling this, this story. Uh, uh, in fact, it's, we are not told it's a parable. So this might actually be a case study, uh, something that happened. Jesus is telling this lawyer off. But a Samaritan came along and he had compassion on this guy. He had compassion. That compassion led to action and the action resulted in generosity. A priest walked by Samaritan, a Levite walked by a Samaritan. And just to bring you up to speed, the Samaritans and the Jews were at loggerheads. They hated each other, just like in the, in the United Kingdom. The North and the South divide. Irish and English, Wales and Scotland. When we talk about racial uh, issues and racial injustice, it's not just about black and white. I'll talk about that in a moment. So the Samaritans and the Jews were really hating each other. And Jesus is telling this Jewish guy, a lawyer, a Samaritan came by 
had compassion, looked after this guy, then took him to the hospital, paid for his bills. Jesus asked the guy, who do you think was the neighbor of this man? Then the guy said, well, the person who had compassion on him. Then Jesus said, well, go and do likewise. Just pause there for a moment. Who is my neighbor? A priest, a man of the cloth, an archbishop of Canterbury went by. An archdeacon went by. A Samaritan, somebody who works in a food bank. Somebody who works in Tesco's came by. Or somebody from Bishop Stockholm. <laughs> or somebody from London, as against somebody from Essex came by, had compassion, took him to hospital, paid for his bills. Who was the neighbor of this guy? And the guy said, well, the person who had compassion. So, you see, as we are thinking about racial injustice, clearly from uh, the sermon I've just given or the talk I've just given, you know that your neighbor is anybody close to you under any given circumstances. Regardless of who they are, what color, what race, where they come from. It could be anybody. <laughs> the, the beauty of this thing is that they, they don't have to be Christians. Amen. Amen. They do not have to be Christians. We are all made in the image of God. So you see, when we talk about racial justice or racial injustice, we are talking about unity. Let's leave this shenanigan of black and white aside for a minute. We are talking about unity. And so the same way Londoners will, will have a, a certain look to people of Essex, for example, the same way we have a divide in the United Kingdom of the Southern and the Northern people, the same way we have the divide of Scottish and Irish and English and Wales. If I go to my own continent, my wife is from a different tribe, whereas I am from a different tribe. And my mother still has some issues with my wife. When you talk about racism, black people embody what it means to be racially, uh, or what it means to be, to be racist. But we call it tribalism. It's only a different name. And so when we are talking about racial injustice, I'm talking about unity. So until we get to the place of unity, until we get to the place of understanding that the next person to me is my neighbor. It doesn't have to be a person from my tribe, a person from my own color, or a person who works in the same place as me, or from my family. Until we get to that point, we will not and we cannot achieve racial injustice. But if we unite, if we love our neighbor as God commands, if we love our neighbor as ourselves, then we will feel the pain of our neighbors, regardless of their color, regardless of their condition, regardless of gender. We will love our neighbors as ourselves. We will feel their pain and we will be able to stand up and speak for them. That is what it means to achieve racial justice. That is what it means to be a disciple. Being a disciple of Jesus means that we are loving people. The person we meet on the bus, on the train, as we walk along the road. Anybody can be your neighbor. Amen. Now, if you forget everything about this sermon, Remember a few things. The person in the story had compassion. 
He then acted on that compassion. And after that compassion, took him to the hospital and paid for his bills. That's generosity. So compassion, action, and generosity. In conclusion, therefore, how do we go about becoming champions of racial justice as disciples of Christ? And let's just bear in mind a champion is someone who actively support, defend, fight for a people group or for people who are marginalized or face racial injustice. One, if you want to challenge the problem of racial injustice in our society, then we must be willing to make the journey from self-justification to self-examination and repentance. Two, if you are a different tribe, or from London, or Essex, you're from Nigeria, Ghana, try and make friends with people who are not of your tribe, people who are different from you. And of course, when we talk about race, that, that is what, what it means. It may be someone from Spain and someone from London, someone from Israel and someone from Ghana. It's cross-cultural. So we try and make friends with the opposite tribe or people who are not of our tribe and befriend them. Then, talk to your children about race. It is critically important that children begin to learn about the issues of race, equality and equity early in their formative years so that they can begin to develop their own awareness of racial injustice in our society. Fourth, what is it third? Fourth. Insist on diversity on your leadership team, in church, in corporate life, in wherever you work. Insist on diversity on your leadership team. Because there is no real excuse for leadership teams with little or no diversity. You can point out, you can point out and make this statement. I am noticing that our team isn't diverse. Is anyone else concerned about this? And just leave that. That will prompt people to think in the process. Fifth, challenge your own prejudice and stereotype belief by changing your behaviors and action and you have to start with your thoughts, your thinking. Challenge yourself to identify your own deeply embedded prejudice and stereotype. What am I talking about? It's about seeing somebody whom you've never met before and straight away you just conclude. We call it judging the book uh, by it cover. Am I right? Yeah, am I right? Is that the same as what? Yeah, good. So try and look at the positives. I've done something uh, more than 12 years ago. And this has come as a result of books I've read. So whoever I see, uh, there is part of me who think that there is something they know I don't know. And there's something I know that they don't know. So when I start the, the, the relationship on that basis, then there is mutual respect. And the finally, from time to time, we need to come together, celebrate our diversity, and build on each other's strength rather than our weaknesses. Because this brings a sense of hope that changes and improves the quality of our lives. So my dear friends, we are on the subject of rainbow people, let's go slide here. We have it in St. Mary's. Rainbow people, we are all made in the image of God. In the church I serve now, I'm the only black. <laughs> I'm the only black, all white people. I'm the only black, me and my family, but I love it. 
I love it because I don't see myself, well, although physically I'm black, yes, some people may be white, yes, we are all people of God and I am ministering effectively to my brothers and sisters in that part of the world. So please, when we talk about racial injustice or racial justice as disciples of Christ, let's move away from all this division, tribalism, or north and south divide, and come together as one people of God. Love God, love our neighbors, and feel our neighbors' pain, and speak out for them when they are going through racial injustice. And God will bless us all. Amen. Amen.